This is a, a, a very typical case of um, primary myelofibrosis, and it brings us to the discussion of how exactly is this uh, diagnosis made. Um, now, you would think that just seeing fibrosis in the marrow, that would make the diagnosis. That is clearly not the case. There are multiple things that can cause um, reactive fibrosis of the, of the bone marrow. Um, other malignancies, uh, carcinomas, hairy cell leukemia, lymphomas, infections and granulomatous disease, drug reactions can do it. Um, even autoimmune disease has been associated with an autoimmune uh, myelofibrosis. And so the mere fact that there's fibrosis doesn't mean that the patient has prim primary myelofibrosis. In fact, morphologically, what the pathologists hang their hat on in terms of this diagnosis is the megakaryocytic hyperplasia and atypia with hyperchromatic, very folded and hyperlobated nuclei and the clustering of those megakaryocytes. It's really the megakaryocytic abnormalities that lead to the consideration of myelofibrosis as the diagnosis. And in fact, there is a prefibrotic myelofibrosis that's characterized by those same megakaryocytic changes but without the grade two or three myelofibrosis that's seen there. So the second criteria then is to rule out other myeloproliferative neoplasms and other myeloid malignancies. And the third is to find some evidence of clonality. Now in 90% of patients, there will be a mutation in JAK2, the V617F, as in this patient, or in calreticulin, CalR, or in MIPL. Those are the three genes that are most commonly mutated in myelofibrosis. The other 10% of patients have what is called uh, triple negative uh, myelofibrosis. Um, a number of other mutations have been associated with myelofibrosis, such as ASXL1 um, and, and others, TET2, for example. That's important because not only can a more uh, a broader myeloid uh, gene panel help in making the diagnosis if you don't find JAK2 mutation, calreticulin, or MIPL, this um, a more extended gene panel can help with the diagnosis by showing clonality, but also it's prognostically important. So patients with ASXL mutated uh, myelofibrosis. Um, especially if they're, they don't have a calreticulin mutation, have a worse outcome. If you don't find evidence of clonality based on a mutation analysis, then you have to be certain to rule out all of the uh, reactive causes of myelofibrosis. You have to have all three of those major criteria, the megakaryocytic hyperplasia and atypia, the ruling out of other myeloid malignancies, and finally, evidence of clonality by mutation analysis or at least ruling out other reactive causes of myelofibrosis. There are five minor criteria. You only have to have one of those. Um, a leukocytosis with a white count over 11,000, so different than the staging system. Um, anemia, hemoglobin under 10. Um, elevated L LDH. Um, splenomegaly. And uh, the final, final one is a leukoerythroblastic picture immature white cells, nuclear red blood cells, teardrop cells, giant platelets. Those are things that you might see in a patient in the peripheral blood of a patient with primary myelofibrosis. Um, what's interesting about the, cla the, classific the um, morphologic classification, how you make the pathologic diagnosis, is splenomegaly is a minor criteria, but the degree of splenomegaly actually has not been associated with prognosis in the prognostic schemes. Even in the revised um, international um, prognostic um, scoring system and the dynamic revised or revised dynamic international prognostic scoring system, splenomegaly isn't included. What's included would be if a patient has thrombocytopenia, if the patient has uh, certain cytogenetic, uh, poor risk cytogenetic changes requiring transfusions, and in fact anemia is doubly weighted um, in those uh, more recent classification systems. So this is a challenging diagnosis. This diagnosis, um, patients with myelofibrosis, I truly believe their marrows need to be seen by hematopathologists who are expert in the diagnosis of myeloid neoplasms. Distinguishing the myelo, myeloproliferative neoplasms from each other pathologically is quite a challenge. Um, even grading the degree of fibrosis is something that is not 
tremendously well strat um, uh, standardized um, and there can be disagreements between pathologists. So I do recommend getting a second opinion from a hematopathologist who specialized in myeloid malignancies.